Hello again Blender Heads, this is Jamie Dunbar from Dragon Boot Studios coming to you with another Blender tutorial. Now one of the most common things that I see in the forums or Blender Facebook groups is beginners asking how do I go about creating holes in my mesh. In fact, usually what they're doing is jumping on and saying how do I fix my mesh because they've gone and just created a, a boolean modifier and they've uh, effectively ruined their geometry and they've got a whole heap of cleanup to do. Now booleaning is one of the ways that you can create holes, but there's at least another two fairly simple ones and we're going to be going over all of them today. We're going to start with uh, probably the most common one, the one that you'll use most often, and that is just simply box modeling a hole. Over here we have a plane. So the simplest way to create a hole is to just jump into edit mode over here, select any one of your faces, and just using the extrude shortcut, so E, just extrude a face down, uh, jump back into object mode, and we're going to go and add a subdivision modifier, or a subdivision surface here. And as you can see, that starts to round things out. Now one of the things that the subdivision modifier does is it kind of softens everything a little bit. So just to make this uh, this hole a little bit sharper, I'm going to jump back into edit mode and using uh, control R, I'm going to go and add in a couple of extra edge loops here. And I might even um, turn on our cage here just so we can see this a little bit better and sharpen that a little bit there. And you can see we start to get a hole. And uh, you can obviously, the more you crank up your subdivision levels here, the more and more that that's going to start looking like a proper circular hole. Now the problem with doing things this way is, we've got a fairly nice hole over here, but the rest of our geometry now is really, really dense. And you don't really want to create this kind of really dense topology just to create this one tiny little hole over here. So I'm just going to go and disable this for a moment. So instead of just doing a single polygon face here. My preferred method is um, to actually go and grab four of these. Now you can use more. Uh, you obviously don't really want to use less, otherwise you just end up with this single polygon face. But I found that generally speaking, you need at least this, uh, these four to get a, a decent shape. And it gives you a little bit more control because you obviously have more vertices to work with here. So I'm just gonna go and use I to inset this face a little bit. And just give us a little bit more detail here. And then all you need to do is go around and select every second edge loop. And we can just scale this a little bit and scale it out until we get something that looks a little bit more circular. And then just like we did there, select all of those faces, extrude down, maybe add in a couple of extra edge loops just to hold that shape a little bit. And now you'll see that when we go in here, we can lower this down to probably two subdivision levels and you start to get a nice smooth shape here. And you can see that although we've added a little bit of extra density here, we haven't added too much. Now you might be uh, looking at this and going, oh wow, he just kind of uh, grabbed those couple of vertices there and just sort of scaled them and, and kind of just did it by eye. That doesn't seem like a way to create a particularly accurate hole. Uh, and truth be told, you'd be right. Um, you know, sometimes it's okay if you just want to go in and eyeball it. Maybe it doesn't need to be perfect, but let's assume that maybe it does need to be perfect. So I'm just going to go over here. Uh, I'm actually going to duplicate this because I need that for something else in a minute. So let's work on creating a perfect hole. Let's just go uh, Shift S and go Cursor to Selected. That will go and put our uh, 3D cursor here in the perfect center of our plane here. And now I'm going to go in and create a circle. Now, as before, we're going to use our uh, four polygons here to create our circle, which means we're going to have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight vertices. So we want to make sure that the circle also has eight vertices. And then let's just scale it down a little bit so it fits inside those four. So now I'm going to go and select our plane, select those four faces, and I'm just going to delete them. Drop back into object mode and select our circle, select the plane, and using control J, I'm going to join them into one mesh. And now if we go into edit mode, we can select the edge loop for our circle here. We can select the edge loop for our plane and just go control E and go bridge edge loops. Now, as you can see, things have kind of gone wrong here. This will happen occasionally. This is because our normals are flipped. So if I just undo this for a moment, that's basically because this edge here, rather than joining here as we'd like it to, it's trying to join somewhere down around here, which is just doing very strange things. Not too difficult to fix. Uh, you can just tap L, which will select everything that's uh, joined to that. So we've selected the plane here, but not selected our circle because it's not connected. And we can just go flip normals. 
Uh, now you can't really see anything that's happened here. In fact, let's just go and turn on face orientation. So now you can see our, uh, this one over here is colored blue. This one is red. That means that the normals are facing away from us. And as I flip these back and forth, you can see that it changes color. That tells us what direction our normals are facing. So in this instance, we actually want this to be red. Uh, I'm gonna go and turn face orientation off again. And now if I go and select these edges and go bridge edge, you can see that we get our, our circle properly. And now I can once again extrude this down. And if we go and add our subdivision modifier, and I go and add an extra edge loop in here just to make that nicely beveled, you can see that once again, we get a nice perfect circle. Now there is one last method that, uh, that we can use to get this perfect circle. Uh, let me again, just go and quickly duplicate this, bring it over here. And if I jump into edit mode and once again, go through and delete those faces, and select that edge loop. There's a hidden little tool in Blender. Kind of wish it was a little more obvious because it's fantastic and I use it all the time. If we just go to our search menu here and go to sphere, and you then drag the mouse back and forth, you can see that it automatically makes a circle shape. And now we can extrude down and once again, add a little bit of a holding edge there and go and subdivide. And once again, we now get a perfect shape. Now, problem with uh, with using the two sphere option, if I just undo this a couple of times, um, it's worked really nicely on this occasion, but there are, uh, sometimes it just kind of does things weird and it will still make a very good circle shape, but for some reason it'll just like explode it outwards um, and make it far too big. If that happens, I mean, it's very simple to just to kind of scale it back down to the, to the size that you want. Just uh, keep that in mind. It can sometimes do some slightly strange things. So those are all your methods for box modeling. Uh, let's go and have a look at booleans. So I'm just gonna go in and hide our box modeling layer, turn on our booleans. As you can see here, we've got a couple of objects. Uh, now in this case, I've added a little bit of thickness just cause you know, there's a couple of things that booleans can do and it'll be a little easier to show with, uh, with more of a cube shape. So this is fairly simple. We go to our modifiers, make sure that the one that you want to put the hole in is the one that you select and go and add a boolean to it. And then either from the drop down here, or you can use the eye picker here and go and click on the object that you would like to punch a hole in. And as you can see, the, uh, the, the color sort of changed it down there as I selected that. That indicates that this has in fact worked, but it's a little difficult to see uh, because it applies it to this object and this now kind of becomes our controller. So you can either just hide this and you can see that yes, the Boolean has worked. Uh, my preferred method, if I just bring that back, is to go to our object options here, go down to viewport display and change this from textured to either wireframe or bounds. I'm gonna choose wireframe in this case. And now you can see that this has worked quite nicely. Now the really cool thing about Booleans is that uh, this is all still dynamic which means I can come in here and I can move this around and that hole will shift. And yes, you can actually go in and, you know, if I was to uh, keyframe this here and shift him along and keyframe, oh, that's, that's rotation, location there, you can see that yes, you can in fact animate this and render it and it, it will still do, um, it will still keep your shape. Um, so Boolean's really, really cool in some instances. See the problem here now, is that if I just go and hide this, you can see that we do still have faceting here. So in other words, faceting is just, you can see the polygons. This is not a perfectly uh, round shape like we were getting with our box modeling over here. These are perfectly smooth. This is not. Now you'd think that maybe I can just go and add a subdivision modifier to this and uh, it will work, but you can see we're kind of getting some strange results here. Our, our Geometry here is, is a little bit peculiar. And if I go and jump over into rendered mode, actually at this level of subdivision, it, it's not working too badly. But if I go and add a second level of subdivision, there you can see it starts to pop in. We start to get these weird little artifacts. And if I go and turn on our, um, our uh, overlays again, you can see that it's done some very strange things to our topology. We've got a vertice that's kind of pushing inwards and there's really no great way of fixing this. Now there's, there's certain things that you can do to try and compensate for it. So rather than um, having our Boolean on top and our subdivision below, we can flip these. Um, 
and well actually in this case it hasn't made a great deal of difference let's go and unhide this if i actually go and add the subdivision modifier to our cylinder um, well first of all we get a bit of a strange result because it's uh, smoothing it a little too much let's just go and add a couple of edge loops here and just flatten that out a little bit and oops hide the right thing now you can see that we're starting to get a much much nicer shape and this is much, much smoother. So this is one way that you can kind of compensate for it. Um, but you can see we're still getting our faceting here. Again, that's not too difficult to fix. Um, we can come in here and make sure that both our objects have smooth shading applied to them. And you can see that that's, that has smoothed out the interior here. But again, hopefully you can see this with the uh, YouTube quality. We're getting some weird shapes going through here. Um, now again, this sometimes can be worked around if we go and select our uh, our cube here you can use the edge split and that kind of uh, goes and smooths things out based on the uh, on the angle of the mesh you can see as I lower this down we get our faceting back if we push it back up it starts to disappear generally you want the split angle to sit at about 30 uh, percent sorry at 30 degrees that gives you kind of the best results and you can see that now this has worked fairly nicely um, but we've still got a razor sharp edge here and there's really not much we can do about that in fact I can uh, I can kind of demonstrate that let's just go and uh, apply the boolean here and disable our subdivision and even though now we've kind of got this this reasonably nice shape um, you can see as I'm trying to select this this edge loop going around it's kind of selecting these these extra edges um, which means that we've kind of got some weird holes in our mesh uh, but even if I come in here and then deselect these and then uh, use control B to try and create a bevel you can see that uh, it, the whole thing just kind of explodes and unfortunately, unless you go in and just kind of manually repair all the topology here, there's there's just not a lot that can be done. Uh, I'm just gonna undo this a little bit until we get back to get back to our original shape. So Boolean's really, really cool because you can still animate all of this and it's it's very dynamic and very nice, but it's very limited in terms of what you can do after you've created the Boolean. Now our final method of creating holes, if we uh, just drop back here into solid mode and turn on our material one here, uh, there, is an, uh, there is a final option for actually just using materials and textures to create a hole. So once again, we've got a flat plane here. Uh, I'm just going to go and drop into material preview here and you can see that I've actually got well, kind of already a hole in here, but it's not transparent yet. So let's go and bring up our shader editor, just uh, get rid of that so we can see things a little bit better. So all I've got here is a gradient uh, gradient texture here plugged into a color ramp so that I've got more control over the uh, colors here and I've got it set to constant um, so that you don't get uh, this fading effect. And this just gives us a little bit of extra control. And uh, just a little tip, if you want this to sit in the middle of your plane um, when you've got generated selected, you need to put this to negative 0.5. You can see if I have it set to zero, it goes and pops it into the corner. Um, using these will uh, slide it back and forth. So you can see I've got this plugged into the alpha, which means we should be getting transparency. And in fact, if I was to switch this over to cycles and go into rendered mode, you can see that we do in fact uh, get the hole straight away. EV, make sure that you go to your material settings and go to the actual settings and change your blend mode from opaque to either alpha hashed or alpha blend. I personally prefer alpha hashed. I find it just gives me some slightly better results when my transparency isn't uh, perfectly uh, transparent. So you can see when I pop that on, uh, we can now see through and we can uh, see all the way through to our Suzanne head down here. Uh, so this is really, really cool for things that are kind of off in the distance. So got another little setup down here this one's using the uh, the wave texture and um, they just multiplied over at the top of each other so if I go and plug this into our alpha you can see we kind of get this uh, chain link fence sort of thing going on here and if you go and change the values together you can kind of decide how many chain links you want in it um, so this is really cool but the problem is once you zoom right in on it if you want to do a close-up shot you can really tell that there's no thickness to this chain length chain link fence so this sort of stuff works really well from a distance 
um, but not so well from close up and unfortunately there's really no great way to add depth to this so you can see if I come in and uh, try adding a solidify modifier and just make this a little bit thicker you can see that uh, I mean it, it kind of tries to to fake it but it's really just applying the texture on the top face and the bottom face there is no actual thickness to um, to the wire here and the only way to get that is is with geometry unfortunately now it can kind of be faked if I was to go and create a bump map here and um, I might just duplicate this so I've got a little bit of extra control plug that into the height and the normal into the normal and kind of the more I crank this up the, uh, the you'll get a slight indentation which will which will kind of make it look like it's got a little bit of height to it but it's it's very very limited so in conclusion let me just get rid of this window um, if you want to do things like uh, chain link fences or uh, uh, tree leaves or something um, using a, a material to punch holes in in objects is is very good but remember that it really only stands up when you're looking at it from a distance Booleans are absolutely fantastic as long as you don't really need to do any more work to the mesh afterwards. Um, you can't really, you can't really do much in terms of adding a uh, subdivision modifier. It just kind of breaks the geometry. Um, but it does have the advantage of still being animatable after the fact, which is really cool. And finally, you've got the box modeling. This should be your most common go-to. Uh, this gives you the most flexibility in terms of being able to add subdivision modifiers and frankly, any other um, modifier to it after the fact. See, so even adding a, uh, a solidify modifier here, it still maintains its shape. Um, so box modeling, kind of your go-to. So hopefully those have been some helpful little tips and tricks and uh, I will see you in the next one. Suzanne's been shot. Oh no! See? Bullions. Fun. <laughs>